So this video is going to serve as a very brief overview of uh, the poster approval process uh, so that if you don't see any of the other videos where I'm going to get more in depth with things like how to design your poster, um, you're going to know the fundamentals here and you're going to know what you absolutely have to have when you bring your poster design to us at the library for approval. Um, so that's a quick and easy process for everybody all around. So I'm at research.moreheadstate.edu slash posters. Um, there's going to be a lot of information on the site um, as far as how to plan your poster, um, actually designing and building that poster in PowerPoint, and then we're going to get to printing. So on this page, you're going to find uh, a lot of the information is regarding printing, the most important information here. Your poster has to be the correct size in PowerPoint um, and the final PDF as well. So that size is going to be no larger than 48 inches wide and 42 inches tall. Anything larger, they can't actually print at Document Services with their large format printer. Um, you do need to get this over to them 24 to 48 hours in advance on a flash drive. Uh, just bring that flash drive to us when you show us the, uh, the, uh, the PowerPoint. Um, you can show us the PDF, the final version, or we'll help you get that PowerPoint to a PDF. But you're going to be better off bringing us that PowerPoint slide you've designed. That way, if there are any uh, sort of problems that we have or any suggestions that we have for you, uh, maybe just uh, putting in a better logo or something like that, a better quality version of an image, we'll have time to help you with that. And it's much easier to do with that PowerPoint than your finalized PDF. So when you're on this page for printing, you have uh, two links that are both going to the same document. And what you're going to need to do is click that form, um, and it's going to take you to the PDF that is your student poster printing approval form. Um, now, your professor may give you one of these, or your faculty mentor may give you one of these already printed out. Um, it should be the same either way. If you need to download this, it's just open in the browser right now as a preview. Go ahead and download it and print it out, or you can print directly from this page. Um, but nonetheless, we'll go down a little bit. This is the actual form that you're going to be filling out uh, as you're creating and finishing your poster. So you need to fill out all the information at the top of the page. You'll notice again the size of the poster. Um, if you did something other than 42 by 48, you should mark that uh, on this line so that printing services knows uh, what to expect with your poster. You need to get your faculty mentor to sign off on your poster design, so they're going to have to see it as well. And then you need to come to the Camden Carroll Library and see myself, Joe Schubert, or Rodney Watkins, or another member of the approved CCL staff. Now you notice it does say Ray Bailey on this. Uh, Ray Bailey is no longer at the university and that needs to be updated. So the newer version of this form will have uh, newer information for you. So what we're going to be looking for as far as your design goes. So I've got an example pulled up here of a poster designed in uh, PowerPoint. Now the purpose of using PowerPoint as opposed to um, any other kind of software to design this poster is because uh, PowerPoint's pretty much everywhere on campus. Everybody who's a student has access to it. Um, and it's very easy for beginners and people who aren't, uh, you know, graphic design trained uh, to be able to manipulate text and images and things like that to create a, an attractive poster. And there are plenty of examples and templates out there that use PowerPoint to create posters. Um, so what you're going to notice is that this is one single slide. Uh, it's several elements on that slide. Um, but as you see over here where we would normally, if we were making a PowerPoint, would be inserting new slides, this is just one slide. So you're not actually creating a big, long PowerPoint presentation with multiple slides, it's just one. But what makes this special is if we go to design here and we go to slide size, we go to custom slide size, instead of being maybe four by five inches or something like that as your standard PowerPoint slide so that it fits on a piece of paper or several slides on a single page, uh, this is actually, as you notice, 48 inches wide and 42 inches tall. Now that is the maximum size, you can go lower um, if, your, if your poster design needs to be, it could be uh, 48 inches wide and 35 inches high, for example. Um, so there is some malleability there. You can change that if you'd like, uh, but it is extremely important that you have 
this as um, a larger size, no larger than 48 by 42, but you have to set this um, to the proper sizes. Even if you get a template online for a poster, it may not be set to the right size. It could be over 48 by 42 in some dimension, and you're going to have to fix that before you begin because, if again, if it's too large, they're not going to be able to print it for you. So when we're working with a document that's going to be 48 by 42 inches, it's going to be printed very, very large. These posters are going to be um, several feet tall, several feet wide. So, of course, if you're going to be inserting images into that, and these are going to, these images themselves, such as the, the MSU logo up here, um, this isn't going to be teeny tiny like we're seeing it on the screen right now. Uh, if you see down here in the corner, we're actually only at 12% of our view. So everything is scaled down to 12%. If we actually bump this up to 100%, we're going to be much closer to what this is actually going to look like once it's printed. So, as you see, I can scroll and scroll and scroll before I hit the bottom or the other side because there's so much space here that's being used. Um, as you notice, this is a nice crisp logo. Uh, there's not a lot of pixelation. And this is what you want to really aim for. You want this poster to be readable from about six feet away. Let's see what size of font we're using. So the size of this font is actually 28. Um, and let's see what this is. So for our headers, that's actually 40. And let's see what the main title is. Our main title is about 96. Um, the names are 67, subtitles um, 38. So you're going to be working pretty large. Usually when you open Microsoft Word and you start typing a paper, you're working at a size like 11 or 12 point font. Uh, if you were to be working with 11 or 12 point font, um, when this thing gets printed at 100%, nobody's going to be able to read it. You're going to have to be right up on it. And that's not what you want. You want to be able to read it from six feet away. And so this example poster may use a lot more images than your poster may be if it's uh, purely academic or scientific. Um, but let's make sure that when you use an image on your poster, that when you go to about 100%, you're not going to have, just like the text and the, the logos, you're not going to have a lot of pixelation. You need to use um, high resolution images, high quality graphics, so that when you pull them into here and you want them to be readable, uh, and look good when they're printed out so large um, you need to have a higher resolution so to help you with that as far as logos go if you go back to research.moradstate.edu slash posters and you go to resources and help over here on the left hand side we actually have a variety of MSU logos and um, as we're able to get more and as the need for more comes up we'll we'll look into those and try to get them on the site as well. So, for example, you have the Moorhead State University uh, nursing logo. All I had to do was click on that link for nursing logo and I've got it opened. Now, I can either right click that and save that to my computer. Uh, let's see if I can just copy and paste. So let me zoom out a little bit so we see where it ends up being. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste. So that actually did work. The transparent background is being preserved. So if this were a nursing poster, maybe I have the MSU logo on one side, and over here I take out this MSU logo and uh, sort of resize this as I need to, um, and have that on my poster as well. Um, other other versions of the MSU logo are over here. That's uh, you know transparent background with no text, or I'm sorry, with text for this one. That's pretty large um, without text over here, so if you don't want that bottom text on the image. So when it comes to approving your poster for print uh, from the CCL staff, uh, that, those are the main things we're going to be looking for. Um, did you use good logos that look good at 100%? Is your text large enough so that it's going to be readable about six feet away? Um, and does it do all the images look good? Is there anything that needs to be bumped up? Um, there is one way in Google to make that a little bit easier if you're using Google Images you may have to get on here to find an alternative so let's say uh, nursing so when you do a Google image search and you find some stock photography uh, you can actually hover over the images and see what you're looking at as far as the size and dimensions um, these first few options look pretty good 1440 by 810 
Um, these should show up and work pretty good. Let's see. This was about 20, 2,600 by 1,500. Let's copy and paste that into PowerPoint. So there we go. We're, we're at 99%, close enough to 100. Uh, things don't look too pixelated or grainy. Things look pretty nice because that's a large image size to use on this poster. Let's zoom out a little bit. It's actually, uh, you know, larger than we'd even need in this case. Um, but let's see what happens when we go back to Google. So let's see an example of what a bad image might be. Uh, if we go down the page a little more, you see this image, which is 300 by 172 pixels. Now do the exact same thing with that. I'll copy it, go back to PowerPoint, and paste. Uh, so as you can see, this is compared to the last image is teeny tiny up there in the corner. Um, and let's say we just wanted to throw this into our poster right in the middle. Let me take this out and replace it with this. Um, now it's obviously too small and it's not going to fit the rest of the images here, so I'd want to be scaling that up if anything. But you'll notice when I go into about 100%, you can't really scale up images like that and preserve the quality of them. So because that was so small and I've pulled it from the corner to size it up, when I actually go in and look at this at 100%, this is the way that I can expect it to print. There's all kinds of junk and garbage just from pixelation and it doesn't look very good because it's too small of an image uh, to be using on this poster. So one way that I can try to find better results, if I'm seeing a lot of low quality results, I can on Google go to Tools when I'm on the image search page, and under Size, we'll go with Large. Now my search results should show only large images. And you notice when I'm hovering over these, we're not seeing anything nearly as small as that last image that we copied and pasted over. Um, everything's generally above 1,000 pixels in one direction or the other. Now there's one more important step to this process, the last step uh, once you've completed your poster design, your faculty mentor has signed off on it, and you brought it to the Camden Carroll Library to the approved staff members who can sign off on it and say that everything looks good, it's good to go to print. Um, what you need to do before you bring it to printing services is get it from PowerPoint to a PDF. And the way you do that is by clicking File here in PowerPoint, and you should see an option that says Save as Adobe PDF. If I just click that button, uh, you see that the Save as type is changed to PDF files. Uh, that means that it's going to actually save this in a different format called a PDF. And I'm choosing to save it on my desktop. You'll probably want to put it on whatever flash drive you're going to give to uh, print services temporarily uh, just to give them your file. So I'm going to leave this alone and call it UCF Poster and hit Save. Now it's going to go through a quick little process of creating that PDF, and then it's probably going to pull up the finished PDF version for us. And there we go. So now we have UCF Poster.PDF, and this is opened in Adobe Acrobat Pro rather than PowerPoint. So we can go around, we can look, make sure that everything is exactly as we expect it to be, as we want it to be. Zoom to 100%, and it should look something similar to when you've zoomed in on PowerPoint to 100%. Um, if it doesn't, if this, is, if this poster is very, very small at this point, then something's gone wrong. Um, check your dimensions down here. I see mine is 48 by 42, so I know I'm good. Um, if something went wrong, then we're going to have to try to go back to PowerPoint and figure out what happened. Hopefully you've gone ahead, you've gone into design and changed that to the custom slide size and you've made sure that it's 48 by 42 or something smaller. Um, if not, then we're going to have to resize that. You may just want to come to the Learning Technology Lab uh, for help. So if you do need some more advanced help or for someone to sit down with you because you're having uh, any sort of issue with this project or help getting it to a PDF uh, when you come and see us, um, you can actually set up an appointment with us and it's made uh, very, very easy for you here on the research at moreatstate.edu slash posters page with this resources and help tab. You can actually go over here to the right side 
and we're going to try to keep this updated with whoever is um, able to help you and sign off on these posters. You can click something as simple as schedule an appointment. You see myself here, and you see Rodney Watkins down here as another option. So hit schedule appointment, and then you should be able to find a day and time uh, when we're available. So let's say Thursday the 25th, which is coming up when I'm recording this video, and we choose uh, 1.30 p.m. Um, that's about as complicated as it is. Fill in your first and last name, your email, um, you know, what your status is, and just a couple of other questions so that we know what we're meeting for, and then confirm appointment. Um, I'm going to get an email, hopefully far enough ahead of time, that we're going to make that happen. We'll sit down with you and uh, make sure that your poster is looking good or help you through any kind of problems that you have. Um, now, as I said, one more time, there's going to be uh, other videos on this page. This may change in the future. It may not look exactly like this, but for the most part, this is where you're going to find these resources and help. There should be several videos in the future um, that are going to get a little more detailed as far as uh, using templates, um, making sure that your PowerPoint slide is set up. So if you need more advanced help, you can also uh, look to those videos for help.